Recently, Tesla has been very quiet about their progress with 4680 battery production. And in this case, um, no news is not necessarily good news. Nonetheless, there are some good signs, like a recent report that came out that Tesla is expanding 4680 battery production in Fremont. And in this video, I not only want to talk about that report, but I also want to estimate based on the info that we do have where Tesla's 4680 battery production likely stands today. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Tesla had definitely hoped to be much further along with um, their 4680 battery production than they are right now. And based on my estimates, which I'll discuss in more detail later on, they are likely, even now, still sitting at less than 10% of their 2022 goal here in 2023. This has caused Tesla to have to really kind of make other plans when it comes to meeting their production goals for their vehicles. So they have, for instance, started importing vehicles from their Shanghai factory um, to Canada, in addition to Europe, which was already happening. In addition, the long range all wheel drive Model 3 that's built at Fremont right now, um, that vehicle switched to a new battery type, which I assume to be LG Energy Solution 2170 batteries. And Tesla continues to build 2170 equipped Model Ys, in addition to 4680 equipped Model Ys at Gigafactory Texas. And in addition, reports have come out, and I've discussed these in past videos, but um, LG Energy Solution and also um, Panasonic, they're both manufacturing 4680 batteries, which likely will be supplied to Tesla in the future. So with all these workarounds in the near term, Tesla's um, slow 4680 production progress hasn't affected them too much. As you can see, their sales numbers are still extremely good. But nonetheless, really starting in 2024 and beyond, I believe 4680 battery production will become more important um, with vehicles like the Cybertruck pretty much requiring 4680 batteries as far as I can tell, unless Tesla re-engineers that vehicle some way. And eventually, um, I believe Tesla's plan was for the Semi, the Tesla Semi to also have 4680 batteries as well. Despite some of those things not being so positive, there was a positive report, um, something that Electrek reported in this June 9th article based on um, what the San Francisco Business Times has reported that Tesla has signed a lease for a new building that is a 210,000 square foot uh, facility. And according to the San Francisco Business Times, which is quoted by Electrek in this article, this facility will support production of Tesla's 4680 battery cell technology. Now, as a reminder, um, Tesla's Fremont facility is a pilot facility, meaning it's really where Tesla proves out new designs. So if Tesla is expanding 4680 battery production at Fremont, my personal guess is that this is actually for um, further testing of their second generation 4680 battery cell. Um, the same battery cells that are being uh, built right now at Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas. Remember that Drew Baglino mentioned at Tesla's March 1st Investor Day that at that time Tesla was still optimizing their dry manufacturing process and Tesla was at last update to use Drew's own words quote operating two slightly different versions of the final process step of the powder entering the tool. In the past I put out a video about Tesla's pilot facility and I talked about production there and I also talked a little bit about the second generation of 4680 battery cell that was being built there at a very small section of their pilot facility in Fremont. We now know that Tesla is building a second generation of 4680 battery cells at their factory in Texas. However, once again, since they are trialing, for instance, that final step process, I believe that this new facility um, that they leased in Fremont is going to be once again for further developing this second generation 4680 battery cell to make it um, really more optimized. And so Tesla can really ramp that up at not only Gigafactory Texas, but also their other factories in the future. With all that being said, now I want to move into um, where I believe Tesla is right now um, when it comes to their 4680 
battery production ramp. So using best information that we have, which first of all comes from Tesla's Q1 2023 conference call, when Drew Baglino said, quote, Texas production, talking about 4680 battery production, increased 50% quarter over quarter, through yields increased 12%, and Cato peak rate increased by 20%, and through yields improved by 20%. As I discussed in a past video, I believe with these comments and these percentages that Drew was referring to an improvement over the numbers that they revealed at the very end of 2022 on the Tesla official um, Twitter account. The tweet I am referring to was published by Tesla in late December. And in that tweet, they were congratulating the Tesla cell team for achieving 868,000 individual 4680 battery cells built in a seven day period. And this did include both Gigafactory Texas and Fremont battery production. Now in that late December, 2022 update, um, Tesla didn't give us a breakdown about how many of those 868,000 cells were being built at their Fremont facility versus their Gigafactory in Texas. However, based on one of my personal sources, and this is something that I talked about in the past, and also something that Dylan from Electrified on YouTube mentioned in one of his past videos, I believe that Tesla was at a run rate of around 100,000 battery cells per day at their Cato Road facility and around 24,000 per day at Gigafactory Texas. So at the end of Q1 2023, if Tesla had improved that rate by 20%, that would mean that at their Cato Road facility, they were likely hitting somewhere around 120,000 uh, 4680 cells being built per day and a 50% increase at Gigafactory Texas very likely translates to somewhere around at that time 36,000 4680 battery cells being built per day. When it comes to translating those numbers to an annual run rate and gigawatt hours, I do understand that Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cell very likely has a higher amount of energy or a greater energy density than the generation one cell. So this number probably slightly varies. But just going with a number that we do know from the limiting factor um, that the generation one 4680 battery cell, each battery cell had around 86.5 watt hours of energy stored in that battery cell. And if we use that and we multiply this all out, that gives us an estimated annual run rate at the end of Q1 2023 of around 4.925 gigawatt hours. When it comes to moving forward from there, at the end of this month, when we finish June, that will finish Q2 of 2023. And if we try to extrapolate out how much Tesla has improved since Q1 of 2023, I believe it's helpful to go back to something that Drew Baglino said at their investor day on March 1st, when he said, quote, we're basically increasing the output week over week, roughly 1000 a week per quarter is our internal target. And we're tracking to that. Now, as a reminder, Drew was almost certainly referring to an increase of 828 thousand battery cells, a run rate increase of 828 thousand battery cells per week, per quarter. Meaning that if you look at the weekly run rate that was achieved at the end of one quarter, at the end of the next quarter, um, Tesla's goal is to be um, that weekly producing 828,000 more battery cells that quarter. Now from the end of Q4 2022 to the end of Q1 2023, the actual rate of improvement from the end of Q4 2022 to the end of Q1 2023, this run rate likely improved by 32,000 battery cells per day or around 224,000 battery cells per week. So really nowhere even close to an improvement of 828,000 uh, cells per week. So because of this, I think it's very possible that when Drew meant that they were tracking to this, meaning that they hadn't achieved it just yet, but they were pushing for in the future that improvement. So I think by the end of this year, they will start seeing that improvement and hopefully we'll see more of an exponential improvement in 2024. But here are my estimates as to where I think Tesla's 4680 battery production is today and where it will be by the end of this year. So by the end of Q2 2023, I believe it's very possible that Tesla's daily 4680 battery production rate will be somewhere a little bit less than 200,000. And this is based on an estimated 26% improvement um, quarter over quarter. I believe at the end of Q3 2023, it's very possible that Tesla will improve that daily rate by around 50% quarter over quarter to somewhere around 293,000 battery cells being produced per day. And then finally, at the end of this year, at the end of Q4 2023, I believe it's very possible at that point that Tesla will have improved their rate quarter over quarter by 828,000 per week. 
and that their daily rate could reach somewhere around 411,000 battery cells being built per day by the end of this year. Now, when you extrapolate that out to an annual run rate, by the end of this year, that would equate to, once again, assuming 86.5 watt hours per cell. And I do understand, once again, that the generation 24680 battery likely has more energy per battery than that. But nonetheless, using that number, that would equate to an annual run rate of just a bit under 13 gigawatt hours. More importantly, when it comes to how this translates out to number of Model Ys that could be built with this battery supply, According to my calculations, if my estimates are correct, that should be enough to build over 181,000 4680 equipped Model Ys by the end of this year. I hope I'm wrong and Tesla achieves a higher rate of production by the end of this year than that, but I do believe these estimates are realistic based on Tesla's progress so far. I definitely in the past have overestimated where Tesla would be today. If you would have asked me in 2021, really even in early 2022 where Tesla would be today, I would have pegged them to be much further along than they are today. But using what we know, I believe these estimates, while not super exciting, are more realistic than some of the estimates that I've done in the past. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Uh, do let me know your reasons in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you on that. Now, with that being said, I did want to add a little bit of important perspective because at the end of the day, when you look at these numbers and my estimates, it's really not that impressive compared to the really lofty goals that Tesla laid out. But the truth is Tesla set way too ambitious of a goal for themselves. And since this is the first time that Tesla has manufactured batteries themselves, um, as a reminder, Panasonic is the one that manufactures batteries at their Gigafactory in Nevada. Tesla set up an unrealistic expectation for themselves, which makes even impressive progress seem, in comparison to their lofty goal, pretty not impressive. I understand that setting um, really ambitious goals is something that Elon does, and I'm not asking Elon to change his style. Tesla has been very successful under his leadership. However, had he and the team been more realistic and set a goal of, say, reaching 10 gigawatt hours per year by the end of 2022, instead of 100 gigawatt hours, as they mentioned at Battery Day, their progress right now would be interpreted in a much different way. They would still be behind that goal very likely even now, but they would have been much closer and that would have been a more realistic expectation. It's also important to remember that a very experienced battery manufacturer, um, in this particular case, Panasonic, um, they recently had to delay the mass production of their version of the 4680 battery to improve its performance. And their version isn't even tabless. And based on what I was told in the past, their electrodes are being manufactured with a traditional wet process, not a dry process. The more and more I learn about battery manufacturing, the less and less I get excited about uh, new battery breakthroughs and uh, new battery startups with big claims. Now, I'm obviously still excited about companies that are working for the next generation of batteries, and it's super important. But it's important that we have very realistic goals when it comes to a new battery technology, etc., because it takes a while to ramp up new battery technologies and it, it may seem like it's going to be easy at first but battery manufacturing is a very exact science and really there is no room for error and so tesla has to be very careful and make sure um, that as they ramp this up that it's done properly it's not something that can be rushed so with all this in mind what tesla has done as a newbie battery manufacturer is really in all accounts very impressive and even though their current progress doesn't match up to their lofty goals that were set in the past, once again, they have done very well. And they do have 4680 batteries in a production vehicle right now. And so far, it appears like those batteries are performing just fine. I would love to hear what you think in the comments section below about this. And if you have any experience in the battery industry, if you could share maybe some perspective that would be helpful as well, I would love to read that and I'm sure others would like to read that as well. And uh, I do want to say thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. And if you're watching this video and you would like to find out how you can support me through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description to the CleanerWatt Patreon page so you can find out more. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.